Greetings, Goiânia, Brazil. I wish I could be there in person at your TEDx conference, but alas, it was not to be. Well, my presentation today has nothing to do with technology, entertainment, and design, unless we're talking about the TED, the technology, entertainment, and design of the human heart. Because besides being a comedic actor, one of my biggest personal passions is the study of spirituality and of comparative religions. And for me, Spirituality has no use unless it specifically makes my life better, unless it has some kind of practical application. On the internet, these practical applications that make one's life better are called hacks, life hacks. There are memes about them and whatnot. For instance, you can use a post-it note to clean the dust from your computer keyboard. How about that? But what if there were life hacks to make your life better from a spiritual perspective? Practical applications such as, you know, one thing that springs to mind, the infamous golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, the most ancient and universal of spiritual teachings that existed for thousands of years before the Torah and the Bible even. In fact, it's in every single religious tradition around the globe. And it exists in most indigenous faiths as well. Black Elk, the uh, uh, spiritual leader of the Oglala Sioux, taught that all things are our relatives. What we do to everything, we do to ourselves. All is really one. Okay, so let's look at some of these spiritual life hacks from around the globe. Life hacks that can potentially make not only our lives better, but other people's lives better as well. And hopefully these practices radiate outward to make our chaotic world a somewhat better place. And it should be said, that uh, apologies in advance if I get some meaning wrong or I miss some nuance or mispronounce something. I'm not an expert in this field. And also an apology for only touching superficially on some of these teachings that one could really study for a lifetime, but I'm trying to cram into 10 minutes. So many of these life hacks also are interlinked across many belief systems. You'll see how they flow into one another across the centuries, across holy books and various world religions. For instance, the traditional Hindu greeting accompanied with a bow in Sanskrit of namaste means literally I bow to you. But its deeper metaphorical meaning is the divine in me bows to the divine in you. To many Hindus, if you dig even deeper, the meaning of the phrase in the greeting equates with I honor the place where in you, where the entire universe dwells. My soul recognizes your soul. And finally, we are one. Now, could you imagine this greeting taking place in contemporary America or contemporary Brazil, where the standard greeting is, hey, what's up? How's it going, man? How's it going? Uh, not to mention that the bow is far more hygienic during a pandemic than a handshake. So how is this a life hack? Well, because when I greet someone, I can sometimes internally choose to witness their divineness as I greet them, to honor them, respect them, see them with humility and reverence. My day is infinitely better when I remember to do this, literally or figuratively, and it helps me remember how precious and light-filled every single human being is. This same tradition mirrors itself in the Sikh tradition of greeting with the phrase Sat Siddhi Akal, or literally, God is truth. Again, a phrase filled with a myriad of resonances. And this concept of seeing the divine in everyone is also reflected in the Jewish belief system of B'tselem Elohim. We are created in the image of God. And if that is so, well, then it behooves us to relate to one another in that same Hindu spirit of namaste. Now, how could this be a spiritual life hack? What are the practical, tangible applications of B'tselem Elohim? Well, Let's say I'm having a hard day, I'm feeling down on myself, self-critical, judgmental, as often a lot of us are, low self-esteem, perhaps some mental health issues like anxiety and depression. But by practicing the perspective of B'tselem Elohim, I can turn inward and know that I, as well as everyone else in the world, is created in the image of God. Not physically, necessarily, I don't think God is balding and has a double chin, but uh, this perspective can elevate our consciousness. Meditating on this concept shifts my perspective. I am divine. I have the potential to radiate qualities that define the divine. And if God is the creator, if God is all merciful, all loving, 
Well, then my actions are a reflection of God, and I can mirror forth creativity, mercy, and love, not least of all toward myself. So this focuses my actual behavior ever so slightly towards generosity, both towards myself and to the world and its peoples. This relates to another profound spiritual practice. In Islam, there is a saying, or hadith, often ascribed to the Prophet Muhammad, whoever knows himself knows his Lord. This is a revolutionary concept. I mean, we've looked into the teachings that have pointed to the divine being being within all of us, and this offers a slightly different perspective. It's practical, too. We can literally know more about the divine by learning about ourselves. And personally, this creates in me a hunger to know more about how I operate, what makes me tick, why I make the choices that I make, good and bad, what my patterns of behavior are, how my heart works, my brain too, and most of all, my soul, that mirror of the divine. Because in this process of intensely learning about myself, sometimes in therapy, sometimes journaling, sometimes in simple observation, there lies an excavation of what is holy and mysterious about the universe. And there's a beautiful conundrum contained in this teaching because so many religious faiths, what, what we call God, the creative force behind this universe and infinite other universes, is essentially unknowable. So as we seek to know ourselves, we are gaining a deeper and clearer understanding of what is essentially unknowable. We are knowing the unknowable. I mean, how cool is that? Now, if it seems like this teaching can drift a little bit towards the metaphysical, I'd like to bring us back to the practical for a second. In my own Baha'i faith, there is a related teaching from the son of the founder, Abdul Baha. This is guidance that could not be more grounded or, in my humble opinion, more just kind of meat and potatoes. Abdul Baha says, if a man has 10 good qualities and one bad one, look at the 10 and forget the one. And if a man has 10 bad qualities and one good one, look at the one and forget the 10. I just love this quote. It has so many applications. One of the hardest things that any of us will ever encounter is dealing with the faults and flaws of others. In fact, you know what? I was on a TV show that dealt with this every single week. So sometimes I'll be working with someone who is filled with what I would judge as negative qualities, and I'm at a complete and total loss. I'm not able to namaste this person or see them in any kind of image of God. Well, all I need to do then is find one practical, positive thing to focus on. And I hope you're doing that with me right now. For example, they might be selfish and mean and constantly interrupting, but I focus on the fact that they have good hygiene. That gives me something to hang on to. Wow, this person is annoying and horrible in so many ways, but boy, are they clean. That's fantastic. Let me just stick with that. And here's the good news. If we stay focused on the good, more and more, we start to just see the good in others as we move through our day. Now, there are countless other spiritual life hacks to be utilized for a better, more balanced, more contented life, but I don't have time to get into them here and now, I'm afraid. And I feel terrible that somehow I've neglected Buddhism entirely in this presentation. It's a spiritual tradition that contains literally dozens or maybe even hundreds of spiritual life hacks. But I wanted to share a very small taste of some of the practical tools for a better life that can be found in the world's spiritual and religious practices. There are countless others to unearth, and I wish you all the very best in your journey. And summation, I'll just leave you with this. Namaste.